All right, we're here day two. It was an hour earlier uh, rise. We're going to try to get in where we think Skirkles was yesterday morning and uh, pump all the new bucks there. So let's go. Day two, go cast in the field. It's been a long morning. Um, we've hiked in about two and a half miles from where we parked the truck, about a half mile on our hands and knees, just trying to get up where we thought the deer would be um, up and about in the morning. And we did get probably about six to eight hundred yards, something like that. Um, Miles, what do you think? It's, it's almost noon, I think, right now. What do you think about the situation? Um, we've got a two-year-old buck bedded between us and where the shooter bucks are bedded, and he's kind of blocked us off from seeing where they bedded down, so it's just, you're kind of uh, taking a one. chance if you walk in there just hoping that you find one bedded. Uh, unless you watch him bed, it's pretty tough to do a stalk on him, so. I agree, and we have a couple good bucks in there that we don't want to pull out. Yeah, it's, it's not uh, looking for a 150 buck where there's 500 deer, you know, there's a handful of deer and a couple of giants, so yep. you have to do everything right or else it doesn't work. So we better just back out and try again this afternoon. Get another opportunity. Well, walking back to the truck, we get to the truck, coyotes walking around 100 yards away from us, take my pack off, take my coat off, walk around the truck, get my gun out from behind the seat, walk back around the truck, sit down, get a rest, and shoot him. I, I don't know what's so hard about killing coyotes, guys. You know, I, you guys go out, freeze your butts off, start calling all the time, one or two a week. I don't. It's that easy. Right? Matt Hogue here with Bowcast, and uh, we just got out of the field from our morning hunt and came out, decided to do a little shooting, and I thought I would talk to you about what I call my bow first aid kit and why I carry it. The items in my kit are a portable bow press, extra string, extra string loop material, and a uh, lighter, Leatherman, an assortment of Allen wrenches that I'll be using, and uh, also some string latch, string cleaner, and some extra broadheads. One of the reasons a portable bow press is so important is by working behind a counter in a pro shop for so many years, I've seen all kind of accidents come in in season, broadheads cutting string, just catching them on a piece of bob wire. Anything can happen in the field. Portable bow press, strings that are to your bow specs, cables, because uh, more likely you're going to roll into town. They're not going to have that stuff in stock. If you're lucky, they may be able to make one for you real quick. But having that stuff already set up, pre-stretched, I got all my tie-in points for my peep sight, kisser button, knocking point, all that is already tied into the string to where if I do need to put it on, you know, I'm only losing a half hour, 45 minutes, just reciting it in and getting it tuned in and ready to go. And then we're back in the hunt. We also carry string cleaner and wax. You know, we're out here spotting stocks and we're crawling through a lot of weeds, grass, sagebrush. So after a couple days in some stocks, you know, it's a good idea to clean your string, get it re-waxed. Also, you know, for obvious reasons, we're going to carry extra broadheads and extra arrows in case uh, something gets broke or lost. We're set for any inconvenience that might happen in the field. Uh, and that's my bow first aid kit. It's something I hope you never have to use, but it's it's a good thing to have in case you need it. Well, here's my trophy for the day. After uh, about seven hours of stalking and Messing around with them deer, we had about a two and a half mile hike back to the truck. Got to the truck, took our packs off, and noticed that this coyote was way too close to be left alone. So I got the old predator management system out of the out from behind the seat, snuck around, set up on the sticks, and 
the rest is history. So, note to all you other coyotes, don't get too close to this crew. It could end up bad. Well, we're running out of light here on day two. The, uh, the afternoon was some more exploration. We actually got to another piece of the property Miles showed us and just kind of looked around for the train. Saw a few few deer, nothing that we really wanted to go after. And uh, the news of today is, is, is our big bucks are still where we, we left them. Uh, so we're going to come back in the morning and catch up with you from the land of big bucks and good times. So we'll see you tomorrow.